Okay, the second method I want to discuss is WordFish. And WordFish really comes a little bit closer to uh, standard methods in, in machine learning. And it's really strongly inspired by machine learning. So it is more like, uh, a little bit like PCA, a bit like uh, topic modeling, which we discuss next week. Um, but it is inspired by a type of statistical method that we have not really discussed in this course. Uh, we can't simply discuss everything. Um, but the, the concept here is relatively straightforward. So I want you to think about a latent variable model, a bit like factor analysis, actually quite a bit like factor analysis, but from a slightly different perspective. Um, and this model is called the IRT model, item response theory model. And the basic idea is, is straightforward and, and you will be able to understand. So um, the example that is typically used here is that of an exam. And you can uh, imagine that if you have a multiple choice exam and you give the right answer in this exam question, it is impossible to know whether that is because the question was easy or because you are a good student, right? So if we know that you gave the right answer, there might be any of those two reasons, the question difficulty or your ability. And the same if you give the wrong answer. It might either be that the question is very difficult or that you have not studied very well. So we don't know. And we can statistically, we cannot separate those two. So we have these two latent variables, these two unobserved variables, ability and difficulty. Um, and we cannot separate the two when you give an, an answer to a question. However, if a lot of students answer the same exam and the exam consists of several questions, now it becomes more straightforward, right? Because the difficulty of the question, it varies by question, for every question it's different, but it's the same for every student who answers that question. And the ability or capability of the students, it varies between students, but it is the same with every question they're answering. So on average, we can say something more. If one question is poorly answered by many students, it's probably a difficult question. Or if one question is uh, correctly answered by many students, it's probably an easier question. And the same for the ability. If one student answers many questions correctly, it's probably a highly able student. Whereas if the same student answers many questions wrongly, it's probably uh, not a very good student. So on each answer, we don't know, but on average, across the questions and across the students, we can estimate how much is this ability and how much is the difficulty. So you can imagine, and you don't have to worry about the technical details, but you can imagine one can make a statistical model that basically looks at the average correct answer for a student across questions and the average correct answer of a question across students, and so get an estimate for the difficulty and the, of the question and the ability of the student. Now, and we can also make a parallel. So let's think not of questions and students, but words and documents. And we don't think of difficulty and ability, but we think of the ideological position of the dimension and the word usage in the documents. So uh, we, we can do a similar kind of analysis where we look at um, the, the association between the words and the documents to un find the underlying ideological dimension uh, across the documents, similar to how we find the uh, underlying difficulty across questions. Yeah, so there's a statistical model which measures a document fixed effect. So this is just how often do words occur in general in this document. In other words, how long is the document? There's a word uh, fixed effect. How often is this word typically used? Yeah, so these two things have nothing to do with ideological position. Some documents are simply longer, some are shorter. Some words are more common, some words are more rare. We need to correct for that in the statistical model, but it is not informative as such. But then there is the link that we have an estimated ideological position and an estimated um, connection between the word and the ideological position. So some words tell you a lot about the ideological position. Some words tell you very little about the ideological position. So beta tells you how much does this word tell you about the position of the document. And theta tells you where do we estimate this document to be on this ideological scale. Yeah. Um, so this is a Bayesian model that tries to estimate this. There is an earlier version in 2004, and otherwise it's based on this idea of word scores as well. Um, but it is basically a statistical method 
to estimate the position of a set of documents on an underlying ideological dimension, uh, taking into account that some words are more frequent than some are less, that some documents are longer and some are less, and that different words have different ability to separate uh, documents in terms of their ideological position. So in the lab, keep an eye out for the beta and the theta. The beta is how much does the particular word, so every word has a beta value, how much does this word uh, help in distinguishing texts along the ideological dimension, and theta captures the actual ideological position uh, of the document. So I will stop there. Good luck with the lab. See you next week.